Hey Zelda Universe, I'm Penny and I'm a supermod on the Zelda Universe forums and I'll be answering the mailbag questions today. I lost the audio file. Where could it be? I just don't know. Blah blah blah. First question is from Suzumushi100 and they ask, are all the different links, such as the link from Wind Waker, related to the link from Link's Awakening? Unfortunately, there isn't much evidence that proves or disproves any biological relationships between the different links. One of the only games that hints towards any sort of family ties between the links is Twilight Princess, in the form of the Hero's Shade, the Stalfos-like creature that teaches you the hidden skill. In Ocarina of Time, it's said that any non-Kokiri who spends too much time in the Kokiri Forest or the Lost Woods will eventually turn into a Stalfos, so it's possible that the Hero's Shade is Ocarina of Time Link who went back to the Lost Woods and Kakiri Forest after finishing Ocarina of Time and was eventually transformed into a Stalfos, or a Stalfos-like creature technically. After teaching Link the seven hidden skills, the Hero's Shade refers to him as my child, which isn't really like hardcore evidence, but it is something. That's only a theory, nothing's been confirmed by Nintendo, so at this point we don't really know if any of the links are related to each other. Next question is from The Legend Killer. And he asks, in Skyward Sword, do you think Link or anyone will have voice acting? If not in Skyward Sword, do you think that The Legend of Zelda will have voice acting in the future? The only voice acting that we've seen so far in The Legend of Zelda series has shown up in the CDI games and the old TV show, both of which weren't that popular with the current Legend of Zelda fans. In future, it's possible that we might see voice acting from some of the NPC characters, but definitely not from Link himself. Like Jason was saying in the last mailbag video, Link is voiceless and pretty much emotionless because he's supposed to be a way for the player to put themselves inside the game. The player is supposed to see themselves in Link, so if he's emotionless and personalityless, it's easier for them to project their own thoughts and memories and everything into Link. So they're playing the game more as themselves and not just a character that Nintendo's invented for them. Personally, I don't really want to see voice acting make too much of an appearance in the Legend of Zelda series. I like it the way it is now, it's got a certain charm to it just with text boxes and everything. Next question is from Insane Hammer, and Insane Hammer asks, do you think that you'll be able to see Ocarina of Time Link's mother in Skyward Sword? Possibly see her flee into Kakiri Forest or the Lost Woods? As far as I'm aware, Skyward Sword is going to take place a few hundred years before the happenings of Ocarina of Time, so it's not really possible for us to see Link's mother fleeing into the Kakiri Forest at that point in time. We've also never really seen a Link that appears in a future game appearing in an earlier game, so following the precedent of that, no, I don't think we'll be seeing Ocarina of Time Link in Skyward Sword. Next question is from Kavanagh, and they want to know, if Zelda's got the Triforce of Wisdom, why is she so stupid? That's a mean question. I don't really think Zelda's a stupid character at all. She is the damsel in distress of the Zelda series, but she does manage to help Link out a lot of the time, and she is a pretty smart character on her own. The only time Zelda is ever really stupid is in Spirit Tracks if she's walking into walls, and that's really more of your fault than hers. I don't want to call you stupid, but I'm just saying. The next question comes from Hyrulean Angel, who asks, What are your thoughts on a game featuring Majora and or the Fierce Deity? Not the masks from Majora's Mask, but the actual personalities behind them. I think that would actually be a really good idea for a game. I'd love to see Nintendo explore Majora or Fierce Deity a bit more, especially if the game took place in Termina. I like Hyrule, but Termina is so mysterious and unexplored to us. I'd definitely like to see the series make a return to Termina at some point. Hopefully it'd be a few hundred years before or after Majora's Mask, so there'd been some sort of change in the landscape of Termina, but I would definitely like to see us go back there for one more adventure and see what it's like, explore some more of the unexplored stuff of Termina. Majora's Mask has a sort of charm to it with its whole darker, side of things, and I would like to see us have another game similar to that. If they did decide to explore Majora and Fierce Deity and Terminus some more, I would like to see a more similar game to Majora's Mask. I think it'd be really interesting, and I hope they will go back to it at some point. The next question comes from Valicia Magic, who asks, I was wondering what you thought about the remake of Ocarina of Time being for the 3DS and not the Wii. In your opinion, was this a smart or silly decision on Nintendo's part? considering that there are most likely numerous amounts of Zelda fans, myself included, that cherish Ocarina of Time and have a Wii, but do not have the funds or desire to buy a DS gaming system simply to play the remake of Ocarina of Time, would it not have made sense to create a remake of Ocarina of Time for the Wii that does not necessarily use the motion aspect of the Wii mode? Why do you think that Nintendo decided to make the remake specifically for the 3DS? That was a very long question. 
I think Nintendo announcing Ocarina of Time being a remake on the 3DS was pretty smart advertising wise. It will make a lot of old Zelda fans more interested in buying the 3DS once the Ocarina of Time remake is released. When a Zelda game is released, it does tend to be exclusive to the console that it was released on, unless there's a port or something available, like A Link to the Past being ported to the Game Boy Advance, and Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask being ported to the GameCube. In that sense, it would be sort of weird if they did release the Ocarina of Time remake for two systems at once. Ocarina of Time is already available to play on the Wii, either from the GameCube Collector's Edition disc or buying on the Virtual Console, so it's not like there isn't any sort of option available to play Ocarina of Time on the Wii, just not the remake. It isn't like Nintendo's ignoring the Wii or anything, they are making Skyward Sword obviously, and that's a brand new game, not just a 3D remake, so that's definitely something to look forward to. Next question. XX Deacon XX asks, do you think Link would die in Skyward Sword? I don't really think we'll be seeing a permanent death from Link in Skyward Sword. Obviously, if you die in the game, I'm sure Link will die as well, but he'll come back straight away. That's how it works. Having Link die at the end of a game would be pretty anticlimactic. It would also be sort of emotional for the player, having seen the character that you've played the entire game die at the end. So no, I don't think we'll be seeing any permanent death from Link in Skyward Sword. Thankfully, I don't want to see Link die. Flying Wolf 25 wants to know, in Ocarina of Time, why is Zelda chic? If you're asking this, I'm guessing you maybe never played Ocarina of Time or didn't finish it, which is something I urge you to do because it's such a fun game, you should definitely play it. If you have finished the game and you're still sort of confused, it's just that Zelda took on the persona of Sheik so that she could help Link save Hyrule without putting herself as the princess in danger. Also, she got to be a ninja, that's so cool! The next question is from ZXCQWS. With Ganondorf being the only male Gerudo, how is the Gerudo tribe not extinct by now? There's a gossip stone in Ocarina of Time that tells you that the Gerudos will sometimes go to Hyrule Castle Town looking for boyfriends. So one possibility would be that when a Gerudo reproduces with a non-Gerudo, her child takes on all the traits of a Gerudo and is raised as a Gerudo. One possible exception to this rule would be Malon in Ocarina of Time. If you wear the Gerudo mask and talk to Talon, he'll tell you that the mask reminds him of Malon's mother, but then he retracts his statement a minute later saying that it doesn't look like her too much at all. It's possible that she was a Gerudo, which would make the theory that I just said wrong, I guess. But it's also possible that the red hair of the Gerudo mask just reminds him of Malon's mother. I'm still pretty willing to go with my theory because it does seem to make enough sense, since there aren't really any male Gerudos except for the one every hundred years to mate with. And like you said, if they couldn't mate with anyone but a Gerudo male, then there wouldn't be any Gerudo tribe that would have died out by now. The next question comes from Josh the Lego Dude, who asks, what happened to Tartle and Tail at the end of Majora's Mask? I just realised I have no idea how to pronounce Tail. Tail? Tail? At the end of Majora's Mask, Link and Tartle managed to free the Skull Kid from the evil influence of the Majora's Mask, so it just makes sense that Tartle and Tail would go back to being friends with Skull Kid and doing whatever it is they were doing before Link came in for his adventure. The final question is from 231 Cruiser, who asks, How come when Link has his iron boots in his pocket, they don't weigh him down or make him sink but only work on his feet. There is one simple answer for that, and that is magic. The universe that The Legend of Zelda takes place in is very different to our own. If you're going to question the whole iron boots thing, there's a lot of other things you could also question, like how come the different tunics give Link the ability to breathe underwater and withstand heat? How come wearing a mask can transform him into an entirely different race? How come playing a magical tune on a magical instrument can make magical things happen? If you are looking for a more solid answer, in the 1980s cartoon series, they did show Link a few times taking out and putting things into his bag. When he put them in, they would shrink, and when he took them out, they'd expand to their normal size so he could use them. Like I said, magic. Unfortunately, that's all the time I have for the mailbag this week. If you enjoyed it, you should definitely subscribe to Zelda Universe. There'll be more Zelda vlogs up this week, and more mailbags coming in the future. If you have a question for the next mailbag that you'd like answered, leave it in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like it, and if you wanted to hear me talk about video games on my own channel, feel free to visit Super Pennyland. Hopefully Cody will put the link right here. And goodbye Zelda Universe, I'll see you sometime soon.